So we're here in shady, breezy <laughs> Jamaica. We're in St. Elizabeth. This is Talking Slop, the first live edition I'm doing yeah, in right. Jamaica. And it's an honor to be sitting around this round table with this brother. Um, what can I say? I want to give you an introduction, man. I think it may be anything from two and a half to three years ago that I came across you directly and we connected by way of social media. And um, we've, com we've kept contact since then, you know, there's been yeah. gaps and then as we've got close to this point in time, it's been more consistent. But with that said, I was definitely observing from the outside looking in. Didn't know who this brother was, what he was about. Right. <laughs> and um, over a period of time, especially when it came to you was one of the first outside of my immediate circle to actually say, hey, do you know what's going on over here in Jamaica? I'm over here doing some stuff, developing some stuff, and you should just see, look, survey, observe, mm -hmm. see, what, see, what, you know, see what you feel. And during that time, let's call it three years, just to give a round number, moving forward, I must say you are one of the most consistent individuals, <laughs> I won't even say brother, or just individuals right, right. that I've seen on this island doing the work, laying the foundations, mm -hmm. and it appears and it feels like you're a lone soldier out here, bro, like you're doing a lot of the work, I don't see like big marketing <laughs> budgets, I don't see big promotion, right. I don't, you know, it just seems it's very in-house, so I know what that's like and what that requires, so with that said, that's why I made it one of a priority of mine that when I did come to Jamaica this time, because I was here the last time we didn't get to connect. Right. Um, but the fact that we was both on that island at the same time, I was like, I have to see this brother, me yeah, right. connect physically and um, start the dialogue beyond yeah. you know the, some of the discussions that we've already had. For real, for real. So I'm really inspired, bro. I'm just saying that I'm really inspired to be here. I'm really you, um, appreciative of the invitation to be here in this space that we're currently at. I'm not going to share too much more about where we're at, what we're right, doing, right, right. how we're doing it. I would just like for you to just share, you know, who you are, where are we, man, and what are you doing here, and then we'll we'll take it from there, bro. Yeah, man. Um, I'm, my my story goes back to Mexico for the most part. You know, I'm a African American brother. You know, um, of Jamaican Jamaican parents, Panamanian parents. You know, uh, Caribbean, uh, born and bred. You know, so I never seemed like I fit in the US, mm -hmm. you know, the, the vibration just was never right for me, you know. So for me, this is coming home, you know. I spent, um, it seemed like I was always getting here by degrees, you know, first to Mexico, which is not quite the US, but not quite home. But spending time there, you know, getting close to the medicine and, and getting really deep into what community psychedelics and psilocybin looks like, you know, what it looked like when, when six-year-olds and 80-year-olds are having medicine at the same time. You know, what's that like? What's, the, what's, that, what's that all about? How does that work? You know, how do these indigenous communities keep the cohesion despite everything that comes against them? You know, that, that started to intrigue me. So I went, you know, to figure it out and live there and see what it was like and eventually got permanent residency there. And, and when I got to the point where I realized, okay, I, I see what it is uh, for myself that's going on and, and how I can sort of put some of those things into my own life, you know, my own, my own practices and with my family, because I'm a homeschooling father, you know, since my son was in second grade, now he's a 20-year-old man, you know, looking down at me, you know, and, and it's been a, a sort of a special thing to, to have medicine be this mediator in my life to help me make decisions, you know, because I would, I'm the kind of person I go head first if I'm going to do something. If I decide to pull my kid out of school, I intend to pull him out because I'm going to do what's required, you know. I'm going to, uh, going to become the teacher so they inhabit that space. So it's been a, a long time of, of, um, of going all the way, if I can go all the way. So for me, leaving the U.S. meant leaving completely. It meant going and immersing myself somewhere else, seeing what that would do to me. You know, who would I become at the end of this? And then just sort of going like, uh, you know, the company's name is Diaspora Psychedelic Society. And just like a seed, you know, this dispersal, this idea of, of, of being from a place, but representing everywhere because we are everywhere you know there's no place without us at this point you know um and and the effects that we can have as seeds if we if we ourselves come alive and start doing what we're supposed to do you know we can change things you know even in a place like jamaica where people think there's not a lot of resources and not a lot of um information and so forth you know this is a place that's pregnant with 
with possibility. It's pregnant sure. with ideas and because the people themselves are what heals. Jamaica heals. You come here and you feel how it feels and there, there are a lot of places on earth that heal, you know, but this particular place, especially for people who are melanated, it has a particular significance to me because this is the close, I know you've been to, to, the, to the motherland, you know, to the continent that I haven't, you know, and I don't know if I will in this life yet, but this is the closest some people will ever come to, to you know, brown skin dominating the landscape, um, the problems of brown skinned people, you know, the politics of brown skinned people and what it means to be self-governing. You know, we don't get to see that from America, you know, so for me to come home here, reclaim my citizenship and sort of invest in Jamaican life, you know, whatever happens to Jamaica happens to me, rise or fall, you know, that's, that's sort of where, where I'm standing with things now, man. But yeah, you know, I cut my teeth doing uh, retreats, you know, back in the early days when there was a first retreat company here, I was a little bit of a part of that. Um, walked away because of ideological differences, you know, because if you're going to do this stuff, you got to do it with a certain kind of attention and, and heart and those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, just coming back here is a full circle. You know, I started in, in what was becoming an industry, left it because it had an industry feel to it, you know, but now I get to come back here and sort of take a look at how people sit with medicine, you know, do, is therapy the answer? You know, um, is does a doctor have to be present? You know, where are the therapists and the doctors while people are suffering now is my real question. You know, I've seen people healing in communities already. No therapists, no doctors, but the healing is happening anyway because the, the, the medicine, while it's a part of the healing, it isn't the healing. The community is the healing. You know, the connection is the healing. You know, so trying to bring some of that to the, the quote-unquote psychedelic space here in Jamaica, you know, to, to get our points of view on it and to talk about nature and what that does to people, you know, because I don't see how you have a complete therapy in a clinical office, even if psychedelics are involved, because of the closed off nature of the space. Now that may work for some people who have a mind that works that way, but by and large, especially people of color, <coughs> nature is what we need, and when we get it, we flourish. When we don't get it, we diminish. You know, so working with all that's natural and, you know, working with the Rasta communities and black healing, you know, and, and the idea of what it means to eat from, from our point of view, you know, and, and that is to, to say everyone's point of view, because the diaspora is, as far as I'm concerned, everyone, you know, Africa is the birthplace of humanity. So if you identify, and I don't care what your melanin content is, if you identify as a child of Africa, then we're brothers. If you mentally don't identify, then we couldn't mentally connect. You see, so as far as I'm concerned, I've, I've worked out the race issue for myself and how to put things, you know, because it's vibration that we're after. Somebody who vibrates the same way, resonates the same way. We, we can't fall for the old tricks that our parents fell for, uh, you know, that if something looks different, it must be bad. You know what I mean? You, you sure. can, we, sure. we have more powers than that. We can, we can reason, we can sit with a thing without fear, and we can be who we are, you know, so. So let's go That's back it. to that um, that programming that we get that this is good, this is bad, they good, they're bad, mm -hmm. and tie it in with where we're at and what's going on as yeah. far as how did you enter your experiences or partaking in psychedelic substances, whereas where I'm from, I was being told the same thing. This is good, that's bad, mm -hmm. that's black, that's white. Go right. there, not there. And psych there is definitely one of those places I was educated not to go there. Right, right. And that's what I found for the most part in people in the diaspora who are, you know, raised where it's the States, you know, and the, in, in Europe, there's different routes and entries into coming, you know, into contact with this technology. Right. And for me, it wasn't until I was in my thirties that I had the honest evaluation of what this technology right, right, was right. and how it can serve me, Darren, but then the butterfly effect of my household, you know, my street, yeah. my community, yeah. and like, wow, why wasn't I told this <laughs> right. back then? Why was I told no, you know? So how, did, how, how does that resonate with you? Where was uh, you at? You, you know, I think it's my grandfather. You know, he's the one with the roots from Jamaica, you know, the mm -hmm. ones that allows me to come here and claim my citizenship and so forth. Um, he, he was an esotericist, you know, he didn't let religion infiltrate his mind to the point that he couldn't think for himself anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, crucial. My first five years of my life were spent with him in Panama. 
and then later on in life, he came to the U.S. and lived with us where he eventually passed, you know, after you know, about eight years more of exposure to him and his ideas, um, his constant, um, it's, it's a constant pressure he would put on you to deal with reality, to mm -hmm. deal with yourself, to mm -hmm. see how you are part of whatever you're complaining about. And if you want to change it, take that part that you're a part of and subtract it and then see what happens. You know, these, these little techniques and ways that he subtly sort of programmed me with, I think, left me in a place where I was going to always search for something a little bit different. I was going to mm -hmm. try to look a little deeper, you know, because he, he always challenged me to look deeper. If I was sad, why are you sad? For what? What's this display about? You won't get a thing from me with this. Mm -hmm. Not like this. So change. Mm -hmm. You know, he made me realize I was in control of the display, the thing that I was doing to try to get things, to get the world to respond to me. You know, so I think those early seeds, man, really left me, you know, I was in, in the military, you know, combat, you know, in the uh, Gulf War. And I came out of there with as many problems as I went in with, maybe compounded, you know, was the only real issue. Um, and so, because despite all of his teachings and so forth, you know, we rebel, we live a life, we decide we know better and so forth. So I went off on that path and doing what I wanted to do and, and so forth. But um, eventually, I think all of his teachings brought me back around, you know, because I remembered that there's a state that I inhabit where I, I have some say in what the hell I do mm -hmm. and then what's going on around me, you know, and how to subtract from that. So when I first um, came in contact with psychedelics, it's because I was suffering from things like PTSD and um, I read the works of Carlos Castaneda, you know, it got me on my first path to trying to figure out what this shamanistic, you know, mm -hmm. route to things was. And I, again, I go head first into things, so I ran straight to it and, uh, and it put my eyes somewhere around Mexican culture, you know, it's where I started to get fixated on what might be going on in Mexico that gotcha. might, might make something happen. So I started saving up my leave on active duty, I, you know, you get 30 days of paid leave per year, so I would mm -hmm. save it all up, not take a vacation all year, take it all at once, come into Mexico. And I could disappear for a month, you know, up in Oaxaca and San Jose del Pacifico, you know, and, and get into the communities where, where they just embraced me, they accepted me, you know, they called me Moreno, you know, dark one, just, just you know, made me a part of what was going on. Um, and I was encouraged, you know, that when I was ready to take the medicine myself. Um, and I just started, I jumped head first, there was no... There's no dosing in indigenous mushroom culture. There's no five grams here, 10 grams there. There's an intuitive scent that you're gonna get the amount you need mm -hmm. through the whole process, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it, it began with this certain set of um, awarenesses that I had of to how to respect the medicine, that it wasn't just something they thought, you pop like a Tylenol, you know, I don't feel too good today, let me grab one of these. There was a, an idea of reverence that was crucial to the whole experience, an idea that surrender was also crucial to the experience. And then the idea that integration there isn't something you do for a half hour or three hours in a meeting afterwards or in a group circle. The integration is the fact that when you're finished there, the butcher, the police officer, the next person, they all know what you went through. Mm -hmm. There's a common language for your experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not doing something off and weird. You had a session to go in to make you a better part of the whole community. You know what I mean? So that whole container was, was healing. You know, and the sessions happen, of course, out in the mountains, out in nature, all the elements affecting you at once. If it rains, it rains. If it's lightning, it's lightning. You know, so I see where all the legends in Mexico come from of Tlaloc, the god of thunder and water and all these different things. And, you know, so I got to steep in that, but it still didn't exactly feel like home. I felt like I was always eating at someone else's table, you know, while they allowed me and while I was appreciative it didn't connect or resonate with me directly as an African Caribbean person, you know. So while I have all respect, you know, to, to my Mexican brethren and my friends over there and my family over there, and, you know, I'm a permanent resident, so I can come and go, you know, as I want, you know. Um, Jamaica is where I feel at home. It's where I have, you know, red dirt on my feet, red dirt on your feet kind of thing, you know. We share that in common, that, that, that feeling, you know, and I wanted to bring the medicine work down to the roots, you know, get back to what is it that I experienced in Mexico that can be of use here when people journey. I mean, you can go for a clinical experience, whatever suits you, fine with me, but for people who understand that the real work is with themselves, that it's a confrontation with themselves that's going to be not the solution, but the ignition, the, the trigger to a, 
chain of events that leads you to yourself through, you know, and that it's not just the medicine, is that you have to do a certain kind of reasoning with yourself in your daily life, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the things you learn in the mushroom trip are the things you need in your life. The same qualities you need to live life, you need for a mushroom trip. You're gonna have fear, but you need courage. You see, in it's, it's so there's this sort of sense of that, that it's an intertwined experience that doesn't separate itself from regular life, you know, and to, to start seeing ourselves and our lives in a holistic way. You know, not separating like spirituality is over here and mushroom right. works over there and, and I'm a dad over here and a businessman here. These are aspects of the same diamond, you know, it's different sides of the same thing. But to view, to view it all in a whole way, you know, you can we can encompass so much more than we usually think we can through fragmented thinking, you know. So the medicine just sort of gave me a personal path to be on, to follow truth and intuition, you know, because these are the two guides we have in a world that seems, you know, like it has no rules or instructions for us. There are some, I think, embedded in to nature itself, but you don't know a thing until you have a relationship with it, whether it's your wife or your friends, or it's all relationship. You know, if you're if you're overweight, your relationship with food is the issue, not food. So fix your relationships, you know, you start to fix the whatever you see are the symptoms of, a, of an improper relationship. You know, so bringing all these sort of fundamental things to medicine work and helping people take responsibility for their medicine. You know, that you are choosing to do, to do this, to have this experience. You're entering into it knowing that you're about to do probably one of the most significant, significant excuse me, uh, pharmacological, biological, chemistry experiments with yourself. And to don't do that lightly. You know what I mean? That there are potential side effects like the lessening of depression and anxiety. And of course, for some people, the increase of these things, but it all has to be taken into a sort of um, context. You know, what is a bad trip? Well, it's not bad. It may be difficult, but that's a different word. And if you change the wording, you, you can handle a difficult thing, a bad thing. Well, you can't make that good, can you? So it's, a, it's about the language too, you know, and, and, and if it's a difficult trip, what made it difficult? And you'll find that the absence of surrender you know, the idea that one is still in control. All those things can lead you down a path of what you might call bad in terms of the experience, mm -hmm. but even that badness is teaching you something about consequence mm -hmm. of evading, mm -hmm. you know, the truth in your life, you know, on a small scale, on a large scale, you have to deal with the truth, you know? And if you're an asshole, you have to know that. And sometimes the medicine will tell you that. That's but like we talked about, you know, yesterday, you know, what is it to change? You know, change to me has very specific ingredients to it. One of the first things about change is you have to see, you have to know what's going on around you. And if you are being an asshole, you will never stop being one if you don't see that you are one. So once you see that you're one, the next thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get upset in some way about that fact and the implications in your life. How long have I been this way? How many things has it, has it affected? So a lot of people have to go through these stages and if you stick with it, Something comes after even wrestling with that, you know, but then the work becomes your own work on a daily basis to observe how you're an asshole. That's when right. people That's cut you off, when you're walking in the street, when something happens that you don't like, what happens when you receive news that you consider bad news? Is that a justification then for you to go into your usual bag of tricks? You know, most people don't have that confrontation and dialogue about getting to know their own self. And to me, the medicine is about starting that process. You, you get some, and again, I don't care about the dose. I think everyone could have it in their lives, period, that, that feels they vibrate with it. Because you know, some people, because of pharmacology and medicine and other things, they can't have an experience without getting off of their pharmacological drugs and so forth. I wouldn't encourage them to do it because of any you know, self-harm issues. But it's just, um, there's this emerging context here, even on the, in the island, about how psilocybin should be used. And I almost fell for it myself, this idea that well, if you don't have a clinical staff set up and, and all these things, you know, you're not going to have what people need to have an experience. And I think about the tens of thousands of years of experience that people have had with this without those MDs and PhDs around to do what? Fix what? You know, the, you know so I, I, I want to go back to that, you know, to go back to the things that heal without having to have that piece of paper that says you're now legitimate. So let me ask you, I'm sure that you're familiar with the trials that have taken place with the ex-military 
Mm -hmm. um, soldiers um, in the States, I believe some trials were done in the UK with MDMA. Mm -hmm. And um, they seem to not seen this, the, the results were conclusive that 100% of the soldiers benefited from utilizing MDMA for their right. PTSD. I believe it was like 67% it was totally removed, cured. Yeah, yeah. And the remaining it was significantly reduced. But this was done under the proper protocol of partaking in the substance, getting you know therapeutic support during and post right. the experience. And this is the only way it will be or should be administered according to the people who are doing the, you know, the clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing that to say and asking you because you said you have this military background and you came back with more problems than you went there with. Right. How have you found the uh, technology, the medicine has worked for you with that? And did you go through the proper protocols that I suggested did. you need? I did, man. The VA, the Veterans Administration, had this entire protocol for how to handle uh, PTSD and depression and these kinds of things. And the protocol is pills. Pills and group psychotherapy. Group therapy where we not only rehash events, but reinforce each other's reactions to the events. Okay. You know, I never found a solution there. And when I started breaking away from the VA group and doing underground stuff, you know, in Pennsylvania, this is even um, after leaving the military, you know, I started eating psilocybin there on my own, you know, but it didn't have real significant import till I started to go to the places where, where the medicine is from and, you know, really journey, um, really journey in a way that, that had all the right elements in place, you know, to make it um, the kind of thing where you don't need to have three, four, or five, and six medicine experiences, you know, but one well prepared for experience um, that's integrated well afterwards because, again, preparation is everything, surrender, during is everything, and then trying to figure out um, through self observation what it all means, you know, going forward. So if, if, a, if a psychedelic retreat doesn't have a follow up, um, you know, I would say be careful, you know, maybe you can afford to go to places and get a good feeling for a while and go back to your life, but I'd rather deal with people in, that are looking to change how they see themselves, change their relationship to food, to life, to drugs, the relationship to substances, the relationship to the medicine itself. There's some people who are looking to go deeper and explore themselves further and see what that means, you know, with medicine. And there are those who just want to get a sense of life without it and feel still alive and connected, you know, because we're built for it, you know, we're built for joy, like we're built for suffering. So exploring joy, um, I don't know what the MDMA and clinical trials say about those things, about immersion in nature, you know, and what that does. But there's been a lot of time without therapy where the stuff has worked really, really well. Um, of course, there are outliers and there are all kinds of bad experiences that can be had because they're powerful substances we're talking about, so not handled well, um, there can be issues. But to say that only a clinician can handle things well is to sort of diminish the human capacity a bit. You know, we can form ourselves around sound principles and, and do things the right way. Um, and MDMA, I believe, is a, is a medicine that I won't find in nature if I go looking for it. So I think, you know, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. I think if they created that, they get to say how it's used. The day they create mushrooms, they get to tell me how it's used. So for now, nature created them, nature tells me. So I immerse myself in nature with a substance that works with my physiology and my biology to bring about change, transformation, and truth. And I've never seen that in a clinician's office. Not directly, you know, that's it. So I'm, I'm, I'm making an assumption, but I'm pretty confident in this is a big part of your experience is an inspiration as to what's led you to set up the Diaspora Society and support your brethren, whether it's military, or, you know, yeah. challenges that they face, you know, or, you know, cultural, lineage, and ancestral. Yeah. And um, why do you think that's important? You know, why not render on to see? Why not, well, you know, MDMA, you know, this is, this is what, this is the current climate, you know? Why, why, do, why are we looking into bespoke, you know, places and spaces for our people to have these experiences rather than the clinic? Because the container is everything. Remember I told you in Mexico, the, everybody in town knows what you've gone through if you've had an experience because they've all gone through the experience mm -hmm. you know it's been it's used for rite of passage celebration atonement 
you know, um, marking important, you know, celestial events and terrestrial events and those kinds of things. So that's way outside the scope of therapy for the most part. But a whole life has all those things in it. A whole life can't be had in a therapy session, but a whole life is to be lived uh, therapeutically in a way that where you're constantly reasoning with yourself towards better choices. You know, so if there isn't that aspect of things, then I think people can pay a lot of money to have a very moving experience. But like all peak experiences, good or bad, they diminish and they can recede into memory. Now, that can happen with the psychedelic experience as well. So it's really important to me to, to do the kind of work that you can't do at a retreat, you know, and that is address somebody one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, direct contact, where they feel that all their issues are addressed without a competing interest. There's not somebody here who's a veteran with PTSD and another person who's 67 years old with end of life issues and another mother who's you know postpartum depressed. And you know, it's really hard to get people's, and it's one of the things I learned there, really hard to get, get people's um, needs addressed in that kind of setting. So again, I'm not against retreats in general. You know, if they can kickstart a process that, that renews and regenerates and gets you to shake off the old skin and go back to your life, great. But I don't think it's the way forward for humanity, mm. not retreats. Just like I don't think doctors should be your plan for health going forward. I think your plan for health should be good health, preventing yourself from ever needing the doctor. So my point is living the kind of life where you don't need to get away to have a retreat. Mm. You see what I mean? And if that means medicine work at home, uh, you know, I'm not encouraging anyone, anyone to defy law enforcement in their respective territories and jurisdictions mm -hmm. rendered under Caesar wisely, you know, but what I'm saying is also understand that the systems aren't necessarily set up to serve your best interests, not always. And we've seen, I could cite examples and you know them as well. It's certainly not for us as people of color. So trying to create healing spaces where our issues are addressed without feeling like we're strange or that we are a minority even in that space. Because I know people who come here for retreats with many companies and people of color feel as if there's a general conversation occurring and they're on the periphery, mm -hmm. they're on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'd love to see that go away completely. You know, primarily again, not with retreats, I don't want to see it go away with people coming here. I want to see it go away in society. Mm -hmm. I want to see it so that our people who have been stigmatized by the drug war can shake off that and begin to get healing in situ, in place, right where they are. You know what I mean? And then if, if you want to come and recreate and connect with community and family and like minds and see similar faces and have the experience in a communal kind of setting, you know, where you can... Uh, deal with other energies, you know, that are still associated with you, then I would encourage that, you know, the things that we're putting together have to do with that. They have to do with connecting with nature and this idea that community to me seems to be a diminishing quantity. That's part of why I left the US. The sense of feeling disconnected from my neighbor on either side of me. But as long as I had my own little pod with everything in it, you know, life is good. Life is so so, you know, but I wouldn't necessarily call that life either. Not when there's this abundance, you know, mm -hmm. not when there's, you know, sunshine and, and people who um, have a spirit about them. That's what Jamaica is, what I'm saying, Jamaica heals. You know, you come here and you find a different attitude in people across the board. And every place has its problems. But um, health and wellness is almost something that happens by default here, you know, if you're not careful. It's easy to drink and overdo all kinds of stuff, but if you're looking for health and wellness here, it's easy to be found. In some places you gotta dig or pay three times as much and go to Trader Joe's and the next brand, you know, but here you grab something from a tree, you go to a stand, you talk to people, you know, and you can find out what, what leaves are good for curing what. What bark, if you steep it, you know, will, will cure an upset stomach, you know? So that, that's the stuff that gets me. Now, a lot of that is anecdotal. So there's a lot of things, you know, but I get to explore for myself. I get to see something steeped in what I'm like, you know, inform me. And there's never anything wrong with more information, you know, and especially when the information is coming from, from, from sources that know through experience. They may not have the PhD, some of the Bush doctors here even, you know, um, but the, what they have is a relationship 
a relationship to the plants there, a relationship to the weather, the sky, the water, and through that relationship they're informed. I'll take that. You know what I mean? It's not all and everything. You know, I've had a kidney transplant. I couldn't just get off my pharmaceutical drugs and say I'm going to live off of root barks, you know, and those kind of things. It'd be unrealistic, you know, so we have to be adult and mature about things, but um, I found that what's missing in most of our lives, regardless of ethnicity, minority background, all this kind of stuff, is a connection to nature, connecting to the plants, to that world of, that primordial world that was here for a billion, billion years before us. Maybe not that long, but a long time before we got here. A world that set up a mind and domination of the whole planet before we showed up, you know, and that we think we conquer. But the minute we turn away, it's growing back and we can't, we can't do anything about it. It'll swallow up whatever we make and do. You know, so that, that those forces are, they're not abstract to me. They're not, you know, theoretical. They're, they're living. They're making my body and my heart beat and giving me a sense of sensation. And, and I owe it to myself to have um, the clearest mind to do it with. I owe it to you to have a clear mind. Because if I have a foggy mind and you cut me off on the road, I might experience some rage that leads to this, this, or the next thing. But if I have the attitude, man, he's in a, he's in a rush. Let me give this brother some space. Hope he gets home safe. Same situation, different me in the driver's seat, so to speak. So making those writer choices and inhabiting a space where you're not bothered by every outside thing because you're in control of yourself. And, and, and the funny thing about control is that you find it through surrendering it, you know, through letting go of what you think you you know, whatever, identity, possess, or, you know, through, again, medicine work and some of the deeper esoteric stuff we could go into for hours and talk about, you know, but just in the context of wellness, like, what does that mean? Okay. You know? I want to jump in there, because we're going to go into that, because we have to go into that. That's what we're here for. But I want to bring up the relevance, because I'm going to be, from the outside looking in, you know, my years growing up in the UK, we've got a large, you know, um, Jamaica culture, culture influence in the UK. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, we've got you know those who came over during the Rim Rush. We got the music influences, yeah, yeah. and you know, everybody knows everybody. You know, basically, you come from the Caribbean, UK, and there's a you know a dynamic of the culture breakdown there. But Jamaica is that definitely one of those at the forefront and most influential. Um, and you come to Jamaica, and it's beautiful. You know, the landscapes, the terrains flowers the whole shebang mm -hmm. it's beautiful and you there's beautiful people here yeah. but at the same time in the same breath i must say there's quite a few challenges that you're going to face here sure. in jamaica you know f from some basic stuff like going into the bank and trying to you know withdraw money and yeah. you know, some of the basic mm -hmm. being from our part of the world we might find challenging but just down to like some really deep rooted challenges that you know the local people people from jamaica may be facing and actually not aware of the challenges that they're facing because it's normal they're just built for mm -hmm. this so why am i saying that i'm saying that to say that we're here in jamaica with probably some of the most challenged people in the caribbean islands out of their experiences that they've had yeah. over history and we have we're here we actually if they privilege to be in this part of the world with the Absolutely. knowledge base that we have of what's taking place organically on the land like they have mushrooms and other plant medicines that grow naturally mm -hmm. in this environment you have the bushmen who have access to this knowledge and information but even then the bushman is still a taboo figure culturally you know he, right. he, he's not we still believe in the doctor before the bushman and the bushman sometimes is the last resort or after we've tried it's like now we go see the bushman and see right. what he has to say so where am i going with all of this i would like to your perspective on what's happened what's gone on in jamaica what's happening in jamaica where there's a you know not just for those in the diaspora those you know outside of jamaica the jamaica diaspora, but for those on the island mm -hmm. that could benefit or utilize what's happening on the island so i'm asking you what is happening on the island with mushroom psychedelics and how is it relevant to the story of Jamaican people? I'm, I'm really interested in that. Yeah, man. Um, I'm no historian, you know, but, you know, Jamaica has a stance, you know, that has always seemed a little bit rebellious to me, you know, there's this sense of righteousness and also the idea that they'll revolute if things aren't right, you know. Um, there's a reaction to, to being colonized in some people, you know, and that's to rebel against it, 
you know, and it's not just the Bushmen, but the Rastas that are here and other people who didn't necessarily take on the, the, the mantle of, of Christianity, you know, um, and not just Christianity as a standalone thing as if it's bad, because for some people that's transformative. You know, but there, as you know, there are layers to this experience, you know, and at some points you put on a coat that's comfortable, then you outgrow it and you have to take it off and put on something else, you know, so I allow people to have that experience without judging this or that about it all. But there is an effect that can occur when you disconnect a mind from its native state and place it into another stew or broth, so to speak, um, that allows you to take on ideas that are artificial to the way you might normally think. Mm -hmm you know, constructs that are half complete that you give full credence to, you know, and things of that nature. I think Jamaica is a place divided between people who would do things in a natural, ancestral way and those who are looking as best they can to become like the West. Um, I think mm -hmm. that, that religion here um, was useful at a time to organize communities and people under a, a one umbrella but to organize without your sense of identity is to organize around someone else's principles. And you may wake up one day and find that they don't serve you, especially if they weren't written for you. Mm -hmm. You know, my problem with Christianity is that it accepts me as a slave in its pages, just sort of as a matter of fact. And if it's a book about justice and justice from a cosmic point of view, it wouldn't do such a thing, right? So this is my personal take on things. But my point is that in Jamaica, there's a, seems to me, a tug about those kinds of basic, basic things. Um, if we look around the world, the places that adhere to strict religious code do economically the worst than countries who have found a way to balance their beliefs versus the reality of what needs are and how to address them. Now, I don't know what the exact causality is for that, but I would say that Jamaica suffers from some of it. I think that people would get further ahead if they could put away with thoughts and beliefs that keep them from things that are better for them, like the idea that psilocybin mushrooms are part of obia, part of black magic and witchcraft and those kinds of things. That's a belief, but like all beliefs, they block a truth, a greater truth. You don't need beliefs to live life. Things are what they are. You can believe anything you want, but the truth is not really so interchangeable. Um, and I think beliefs are, are rampant in a place like this, you know, in an island that's a pocket all, off onto itself. Um, and so until people can do things like realize that, wait, mushrooms are legal in Jamaica, that's a benefit to Jamaicans. Others are coming here and, and, and profiting and benefiting from it while Jamaicans are basically outside of of the dialogue most of the time, outside of the experience. Now, there are Jamaicans here who have been involved in mushrooms. You know, um, the place out in the grill named Ted's Shroom Boom. You know, 30 years you can go by there and get a, mm -hmm. a mushroom a space cake okay. or a, you know, a mushroom tea and those kinds of things. But there's never been an organized effort to, to understand what is this substance? What are these mushrooms? What can they do for us? That's a complete no-go here in Jamaica. So there's been a disconnect from that. But thankfully, people are waking up. You know, there are Jamaicans involved right now in cultivation of mushrooms, um, on the integration, uh, counseling and therapy side of things, because the intellectual capacity exists right here in Jamaica for, you know, there are therapists here, there are doctors here, there are people who, if they were educated enough to understand what they have going on all around them, an industry just wouldn't spring up around them that left them out. And yeah, that's my main concern. Uh, another sort of colonial apparatus in place, like what happened with cannabis. You know, if the Rastas here, who have the close sacramental association with ganja, aren't the ones represented at the table in a nation known for ganja, then to me something is off about that, you know. And if, if there isn't an exemption for the cost of it that would level the playing field, considering that it's the Rasta here in Jamaica that champion cannabis when the government would burn it down. Now the government's champion cannabis. You see what I mean? For sure. I say Rasta should be elevated to the proper position relative to cannabis, relative to ganja. To me, that would be justice and social justice. You know, so until you address some basic things like that, you know, I think that you'll always have challenges and struggles, you know, but, but you were just part of the Canex, you know, convention here in Jamaica, you know, there were, 
government representatives there interested in, in the industry, as it were. You know, I don't know the take on healing overall, but I know that whenever there's money involved in a thing, it gets the attention of people um, and politicians, you know, people who need money to do the things they do um, and who write the laws. So I, I think that um, Jamaica, though, should be poised, even from a governmental point of view, to take advantage of what their own climate affords their people. So I'm not saying governments should or shouldn't regulate mushrooms here, but I'm saying that the culture in Jamaica should recognize mushrooms. The government should recognize the potential. The people should recognize what's growing in the yard. People should know. They should understand what's going on in the rest of the world. They should understand why people from foreign are coming here and spending $10,000 for a week to eat something that comes out of the dirt and out of excrement. What's that all about? You know, and, and I think once they, they really get their head around it, some intelligent decisions can be made. And I think they're starting to be made, you know, um, especially if we who are involved in this quote unquote business, if we self-regulate, if we adopt all the best practices ourselves, then we don't have to be told what they are from people who've never taken the medicine, say, you know, from people yeah. who don't know mm -hmm. what it is, you know, I mean, they need advice to be quite frank. Well, you know, it's not different from the cannabis and other, well, in relation to Jamaica, and you know, you go to the Amazon, you know, for ayahuasca, I believe all these mm -hmm. people are the gatekeepers, man, these plants have been gifted, they're the custodians, mm -hmm. they're the ones who, like you said, should be at the table, because it's their table. Indeed. You know, the, the fact that you're not doing the outreach to have these people out, not at the table is a disservice to the plants, to the people, to what you're, you know, yeah. what you're setting up. And I'm saying that to say that is what the industry is as a whole. Whatever country I've gone to, I've dis yeah. discovered that most of the people sitting around the table don't partake in these substances. And you would know if you did that that wouldn't be the way to go about <laughs> doing it. It's about decentralizing these things. There you, and, go. You, know, you know, yeah. So with that said, you know. There is, and you know, that's what the conference and that's what's happening in the UK and the States. It gets decriminalized, legalized in certain places. And then it's like, well, how do we manage and maintain this? And yeah. you know, people are scared of giving the people the power. Right. You know, the, right. the powers that we don't want to give because we should have our own, you know, cognitive, you know, freedom yeah, yeah, right. to yeah. say and do what we feel and what we want to put inside of our bodies. And if you've got somebody like yourself ex-military somebody like myself who comes from a particular walk of life that i found this found our way onto this path and i found the benefits yeah. for our own personal lives and we've got that privilege of knowing that this is actually something really ancient you know that we've been doing as well that we've been disconnected from due to history not our story but then we come to somewhere like jamaica where that's a byproduct of this story <laughs> that yeah. is not really our story but we've just been <laughs> forced into yeah. this, this script and I said like the magic is literally growing underneath your feet yeah the answer to all your prayers <laughs> Jesus <Yeah>. rises rises <laughs> you know, like, careful <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I would like for you to just to share you know to come like so with all that said and done what do you think is the benefits what will be the perks if we get you know whether it's the government the health education all these people kind of get on side and are on you know singing from the same hymn sheet so to speak yeah. what where do you see jamaica what will jamaica be um i think jamaica can take brand jamaica which is a respected brand around the world you know um a well-liked brand around the world um, I think Jamaica should, can brand itself as a place for health and wellness, period. I think it can embrace, since tourism is its chief industry, embrace it, lean all the way into this idea of people coming here to find alternative treatments that they can't get in other places, um, you know, in a safe, you know, um, purpose-driven sort of way. Uh, I think that the air in Jamaica, the experience of being in Jamaica, um, lends itself towards leaning all the way into being a destination, um, very much like, you know, Peru is seen for ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamaica should be seen for what Jamaican law and Jamaican culture is, you know, allowed to thrive here. You know, um, so for all the Canadians and Americans and everyone else, go home and decriminalize things and work to get your places like here. Mm -hmm.
you know, that's what I'd say to do, you know, um, but until then, welcome to Jamaica, you know, and, and enjoy yourself and, and embrace, you know, this, the, in a reciprocal way, the embrace that you'll feel when you get here, you know, it's the best way to, to handle Jamaica, but I, I foresee this being a place where people think of healing and they come here, you know, and that's, that's brown skin healing, you know, with, with our people here providing services, and I don't mean you know, uh, cooking and getting the, the drinks and the driving and so forth. I mean, sitting down and holding space. I mean, cultivating the medicine on a professional level, on a, on a professional commercial scale, serving the world. You know, I see mushrooms leaving Jamaica of, of, of specialized Jamaican hybrids and, and strains that, you know, like, why not? Why can't we dream this stuff up and make it happen? Because it can be, mm, for sure. and, you know, the, 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 the guts are here for it, the bare bones are here, legislatively mm. are here for it, you know, but if we, I guess we got to watch against the hawks who would come in and mm. segment things and sure, hoard sure. and keep things for themselves, but, you know, I'm one for, for sacramental use, I'm one for personal, one-on-one, -on -one, non-retreat, family-based, community-based, mm. you know, journeys. That's it. That's the heart of everything for me, you know. And I'm going to try to recreate that as much as I can, you know, mm -hmm. through this organism that is, you know, the diaspora psychedelic society. Um, like spores, we're everywhere, you know. Um, like seeds, we're popping up everywhere. We've got um, work coming up in Costa Rica, you know. I'm heading back to Mexico to to really pay homage to some of the teachers and people that helped me along my path. They're, they're curanderos and sabios. They're people who are healers. Um, not only in their role, but in their stance to life. They are a healing force. They don't contribute to the nonsense of life. People like that who understand some of these medicines and linking back up with them and getting people a chance to see what authentic medicine work looks like, what, what it looks like when all the boxes are checked, so to speak, or even a clinician wouldn't be upset you know, with what they were seeing because there are people doing things in a way that, um, that doesn't violate common sense. You know, um, so again, if people are looking to travel for these experiences because the world is in such a state that they can't have it where they are, I didn't create that, I didn't make it that way, but since it is that way, I think that we can, we can depart from the single model, you know, just go to a retreat and, and what? Your life will be better, things will be changed? I don't know about that, you know, but I think that if you're looking for a change in paradigm, if you, if you find you find yourself stuck, you know, or at a place where the vibration where you are is toxic, it's just not healing. You need some place to stop the madness for a little while. Mm -hmm. I think Jamaica is that place. Mm -hmm. I think that people come here for that reason. It is a pause in whatever madness that we're going through. Because look at the demographic of who comes here: mm -hmm. people from everywhere, Russia, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, France, U.S., U.K., all over. Coming here for what? There's, there are troubles here, there's poverty here, there's all kinds of things. What are they coming for? There's a power in Jamaica, you know, in the healing of this place, you know. And it, 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 exactly, organic technology, man, that's a vibration. You know, people feel the vibration, they detect it, and they know it's a good vibe, mm -hmm. a positive vibe. And if they don't, and if they don't, and shakes you them know, off. why are they here then? Exactly. You know, but you know, exactly. But but it does shake off something. You know, there's life here. You you, you plant a, a fence post in the ground and it might grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you come here to get some of that if you're a fence post. You know. <laughs> so what's really important to me, and again, I'm from the outside looking, and I'm just you know entering this place and space from that perspective of that you know, Jamaica is potentially the hub for our people. You know that middle passage yeah, route right. to connecting the land masses where you find us. So, you know, Jamaica, Jamaica could be at the heart of that movement, for lack of a better term. But how do we make sure and ensure that Jamaican people benefit from this journey that we're on? And um, at the same time, what does what is the diaspora society doing to that's different from the other models? Oh, that's easy, <laughs> I can <laughs> say that easily. Well, we use our privilege. I use my privilege, the fact that I'm here, the fact that I can organize around psilocybin and these other things, and millions upon millions of people who look like me can't and don't. I think it leaves me with a burden and a responsibility to do things differently in a way that is inclusive, that I cannot, I don't mean inclusive and in like we're also allowed, I mean in building a space where our issues are quite literally front and center 
There's no place in the world right now to get away, to go, if you're a person of color, where you will be served as you arrive, as you are, mm -hmm. accepted whole, just like that. And where, where the way you speak is understood, the slang you're using, mm -hmm. get it. You know, the experience going back of the broken homes and the drug war and the, the effects of colonization in all the places that we're from, you know. Um, I think all those things can be addressed here because this place epitomizes all of that stuff. You'll see the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of colonization here. You know, so it's a good place for black people to come work some of that stuff out. We stood out on the, on the, the shore yesterday and I'm, it's so dramatic, you know. You, I was there and, and, this and you can see and you can imagine, you know, what it would be like for our people in the past to see ships coming from some place with some stranger on it and it changing your world forever. You know, that is a, a deep-seated epigenetic trauma for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And to come to a place like that where you can work it out without feeling that that's strange. <laughs> you know, without feeling like, you know, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get on with life already. What bootstraps? I don't have boots. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, but we'll talk about how to make boots and we'll talk about what it means to, to have. And if you don't have boots, I got a spare pair. And, you know, community, making people feel like like they matter and that money isn't the first priority you know so we're trying to do things like um i know all the places in a psychedelic retreat business where you can pad it for profits i know because i was in, in the business so i go after all those areas i look at where things are inflated like do i think i'm worth a thousand dollars a day because you sat down to talk to me it's nonsense it's just nonsense it just is it's an ego trip that's being brought into the space you know um by the same token, if you're a professional, you're doing your work and you're serving, you also have to make a living and you have to eat. So how do you balance these things out? For me, it's going after all those padded areas and diminishing the padding down to what's essential. You know, um, people don't have to have a luxury experience to experience the medicine. As a matter of fact, that could be counterproductive to some of the kind of medicine work I'm talking about. I'm talking about stuff in your face with this fungus that's going to help rearrange your chemistry and your neurology in such a way that nothing else will compare ever 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 like Terrence McKenna said you know it's like like coming here and not having sex you know if you come here and you don't have one of these experiences you didn't see all that could be seen or have all that could be had that's well within your parameters for having that won't harm you in any way but you could have you could have gained insight. You could have known something more about yourself. You could have triggered a process. Mm -hmm. You know, from, for me, it's about using the medicine to start a process where the dominoes in someone's life start getting knocked over. All these obstacles, all these walls to whatever they want to be and what they want to do. But it comes first down to the idea of if you want to be, who are you? you tell me who you are, I see what you are, and you'll be that. You know, most people have no sense of that about themselves and our people most of all because yes, you're in a, new, a different culture. You want to be accepted. You want to work. You want your family safe like everyone else. But you know that the immune system of the United States, for example, the policing system, its immune system, is highly sensitive to our presence. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So we show up on the roads or in places or we gather in numbers the immune system of that system takes note and begins to do what it does and the challenges like our own immune system forgive me for being a scientist sometimes mm -hmm. but um you know there's be a challenge to a cell there. what's your purpose here what are you doing what's going on what is this all about you know um and a lot of black folks don't understand that that's the relationship they're in with america because they have a birth certificate that says that they're american and they have an american passport and but there's not one america there's an America for Asians, there's an America for black folks, an America for white folks, and I'm talking about the experience, the story of it. And we all have the same themes in common. We want safety, security, and so forth, but not all of us get it in equal distributions by default. Most definitely. You see, some people have to claw and scrape to come up to match normal and even, and that's their experience. So that's a different America than one where um, not that there's anything wrong with privilege. I hope to give my son quite a bit of privilege and pass that on because what privilege of what? Privilege that we talked about yesterday to decide if I want to go that way. I can go that way unimpeded. 
because I'm not going to do crime. I'm going to see what I can see. When that behavior becomes criminalized and something is wrong, as far as I'm concerned, you don't have the privilege to go do. So I want my, my children and your children and others to have a sense of freedom. You know, and Jamaica is the kind of place where if you decide to go walk that way and up a mountain, nobody's going to stop you for the most part. You know what I mean? So to me, that's just basic and I love it. And the police, the immune system here won't be triggered just because I'm here. Mm. See what I mean? It's a, it's a different thing altogether. Yeah, you see what I mean? So to me, this is now I'm starting to live a little bit. Mm. I can breathe a little bit. I can go this way and that way and the next yeah. way. And, and nobody's going to question me because of how I look. I look like everybody else. Yeah, now, now I could behave differently and single myself out. If I act like a drug boy or a narco or something, I might be confused as one, you know, so I don't act like that because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a human in transit from point A to point B. You know, if I come up against the system, I explain myself, they explain themselves and we part, you know, it's usually no beef. That's harder to do for us in the U.S., you know, but again, it's those kinds of little things and they end up not being little things in the end when you can just get a, a, a lung full of free air. Yeah, for once without that feeling so that's what I mean about Jamaica being a, a nexus point for us like we talked about uh -huh. a hub for healing for people of color because uh, you're coming to a place where people of color you know are the motif mm -hmm. you know we are the soup du jour you know mm -hmm. that's just what's going on every day here um, and that makes a difference it's not everything you know and you can make a life anywhere on this globe because that's what the diaspora means to me any place that we are planted on this planet we can thrive from the coldest to the whatever, give us the right gear, we'll yeah, make it, we'll, yeah. you know, and we have already, not theoretically we could, we already have. Yeah. You, you take see the what lions I mean? out of the jungle in Africa Absol and put them in the Arctic, man. Absolutely. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, you're going to get, you know, original men thriving on original soil and making the adjustments necessary, even if it takes generations and it looks like somebody else by the time it's all finished. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Oh, still, <laughs> still, it still is what it is. It's a human story that we have and we all have it in common. You know, it doesn't break down to race for me. It doesn't break, break down to 0 0.03 millimeters of pigmented mm -hmm. um, skin. But because I have the pigment, it means something. It means that I come from an unbroken line of successful biological creatures that made it long enough to make me be here to be able to talk to you. Mm -hmm. We're all success stories. Anybody you see walking around is a successful member of their species. Because on Earth, it's survival. And if you see somebody else, there's another winner who survived another day just like you. You know, and to start to respect each other from this point of view that, you know, forget the box and looking outside of it. Just scrap all of it and just have a, a look with your fresh, virgin eyes. Like, like when you were a kid, just observing, where you didn't know what was right or wrong yet, but you would eventually through experience you know you can read all the books but you don't know and you can't roller skate because you read how to do it you got to fall and get up and fall and skin and fall and then you can do flips and this and that you know life is like that for me so getting people through that journey of of um of accepting when they're at a toddler stage developmentally stumble and fall and do so like a toddler without being self-conscious yeah. they'll yeah. fall and look stupid and get right back up and you don't even think it's stupid because they get right back up was part of the same falling mm -hmm. was the getting up mm -hmm. and the trying again to have that attitude about life yeah. you know to become like a little child again and the medicine offers it opportunity yeah. you know to peel away the layers to be that sensitive observer you know that's been affected by what it's observed mm -hmm. in a world that can be harsh and cruel but the thing about harshness and cruelty, if it becomes your filter, you don't see the rest. That's equally real. And that's joy, connection, family, love. We can't let these dark times, you know, sort of color the way we, we view existence itself. Because politically the world's in a strange place. That's the evolution of their system. It rose, and it, it rose and it has to fall, like all systems, because of the laws. You know this. So don't be so disheartened when you see it, you know, but be wise, you know, as wise as serpents and gentle as, as doves or lambs or whatever the expression is in Christianity, but know what's going on and make wise choices that don't alert that immune system to your presence, if you live in that sort of a place, or get yourself, if you're a melanated person, to a place where it's different. For me, the first taste of it was Mexico more melanated people. Mm. All I heard was senor, mm. sir, 
may I get you this? And sir, may I get you that? And that's nice. You know, it's not life. It's not everything. I don't want to develop ego about it, but just the fresh air difference of it all to be in a place where you're going to be judged based on what you say next or do next. You're being received, but you it's all based on what you do. If you become an ass, then you'll be treated. But if you are just a human being that shows up and you want to try this and experiment and look and see and taste and touch it, then it's wide open, you know, as, as a first starting point. But to me, it's even more so here. I have to jump in, man, because you've mentioned the place twice now, and that was my route into Jamaica out of the UK by mm -hmm. way of Mexico. Spent three weeks there, spent three weeks in Guatemala yeah. before arriving here. And Mexico was amazing, yeah. life changing. I've done so, tick so many bucket list adventures, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. books and shit that I've been reading since teenagers to be there, see that, experience it. It was beautiful. I can't wait to return. Guatemala the same. I didn't know what I was getting into when I got to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. I went there with blank canvas like, this is the name of the place. Yeah. I'm not doing no research on it. I love I've it. got a few contacts. I love it. But I'm sort of going experience. Mm -hmm. Once again, amazing. You know, it's neighbors with Mexico, you know, so yeah, that a lot of the culture tra you know, translates, you know, language wise, senor amigo, yeah man, I'm your friend, your yeah. brother, you know. But um I'm saying what I had to say, amazing places and spaces. And then I arrived in Montego Bay mm -hmm. and I came out of the airport. And I was like, whoa, this is what I'm talking about. And yeah. it's similar to what you, you know, just seeing everybody looking like me. Not just that they had to look like me, but it was the energy and the vibe. Mm -hmm. And it was everything that I expected because I've been here before, but you know, the pros and the cons. Yeah. But the pros and the cons are you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, where I come from a place and space where, you know, a lot of our challenges, you know, it's easy for us to point fingers and we've got the right actually to point fingers. We can point out people and say, yo, because of A, B and C, <laughs> this is why I'm in this situation. But we're in a point now where we're taking our you know, responsibility in our own hands and making the shifts and changes that yeah. we can consciously do and make that happen. But I'm just saying that to say, coming to Jamaica and being in this environment around nature, around people that look like me, the police officers do, the security guards do. So yeah. I'm not going into shops being looked at. The same shops I was dying into since childhood exactly. in my local community, exactly. being looked upon as a threat. They don't even know where that I'm from. Like I said, we just blend in. It's like, yeah. Yeah. it's like until I open my mouth and they hear this accent, that's what throws them off. But before that, right. it's yeah. like, oh, well, you can put down the luggage, put your guard down. You don't have to impress, you don't need to put on this front no, to be accepted. At all. That is a whole different type of experience that many of our people don't get to experience being in no, the parts of the world where we're from. And just stepping into Mexico, I've got some of like, oh, like, like, it's just so closer to home. Yeah. And then Guatemala the same, so closer to home. Get to Jamaica, it's so it's home. It's home. And like you said, it's that step before some people who may not make it to the motherland, but there's these places and spaces where you realize we're not a minority and have oh, never been no, and are never going to no, be. No, 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 that's a That's, <laughs> that's a based lens. on where we was coming from, placed <laughs> right. and distributed. That's a whole different story that they don't yeah, want to no. get into. But I'm just really happy to be here, brother, with you connecting, building this way. Likewise, man. Um, I'm just really interested in knowing and letting my audience know how we stay connected with you, you know, know that we're in challenging times, you know, <laughs> yeah, people being yeah. to get back and forth, but I'm here and this is what I always remind people and I, I haven't done any special tricks, I haven't committed anything illegal right, that right, has prevented right. me from coming here, <laughs> you know, so, you know, if you're privileged enough or you can work to get your hustle tight, to get yourself to a place like this, yeah. how do we come find you, man? What's going on and what would be the steps in engaging in a well, Diaspora Psychedelic Society? You can, you know, we're on social media, uh, Diaspora Psychedelic Society, on um, Facebook and Instagram, and Diaspora Psychedelic Society.org um, is our website. Um, anybody can reach out to us, man. You know, um, we are, we, we don't, we don't <laughs> come from a space. Nice. We, we come from a space where, um, you know, everybody is included. You know, the, the Jamaica is an expression, one love, you know, and that can mean a lot of different things. But to me, it means this idea that there is one universal concept of love that can include everyone. Not just a special person that your eyes twinkle for, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But this idea that you can, your eyes can do that for life itself, you know. Um, and Jamaica really typifies that. So getting in contact with us is easy. Getting here is something you have to arrange, you know, on your end, you know, but I, I recommend it 
you know, if somebody can do it, you know, if they want to to have an encounter with themselves in a place that's really geared towards better and positive outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I challenge any place else in the world, you know, to take on Jamaica when it comes to that sense of, of health and, and, and wellness, um, you know, um, but trying to foster um, education here is really important, you know what I mean? So any anybody who who's willing to, to donate of their time, mm -hmm. their services mm -hmm. to, to help get people here. If they're people who are not of the diaspora, other psychedelic societies who say that they stand with us, you know, and that Black Lives Matter and all the other things, you know, you'll be hearing from me, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be calling to say that I got a friend who, who needs to come out, you know, and he's challenged a little bit, you know, I'll do my part to help if you'll do your part to help, you know? And so we're mm -hmm. trying to use this platform as a way to reach out across everything, whether you call it socioeconomic, ethnic, you know, spectrums, and just reach humanity, you know, it's about vibration. So reaching people who are looking to change that vibration, you know, because they know it doesn't fit them. Whatever it means, a little bit, a lot, it's a personal decision and journey, man. But, you know, again, we're easy to, easy to get in contact with. Uh, but once you get here, we're even easier to talk to. You know, our team, we're made up of Jamaicans. You know, we won't find us importing therapists, you know, in a place that has therapists and therapy. And, you know, you won't find us importing healers and practitioners, you know, except for cultural exchange. You know, Jamaica's an island, so it's been separated um, geographically as well as, you know, other ways from a lot of what goes on in the rest of the world. You know, so bringing ayahuasqueros, you know, um, from the Amazon here, um, they're also part of the diaspora, as far as we're concerned. Um, bringing Mexican curanderos and sabios here, you know, as well as bringing people from Jamaica to these places, you know, is sort of what we're trying to set ourselves up for. You know, really soon we're working out the, the details and the logistics of what cultural exchange looks like for real. You know, of getting the diaspora back together under one medicine banner. You know, that that it's it's all the same love, the same reality, the same existence that we're taking part in. Hell, we're making it happen. You know, um, and to know what that means as an individual, as a member of a tribe, as a member of a community, a family, whatever. You know, that even if you feel disconnected, your connection primarily is to yourself primarily to life itself, you know, That's and power, right, yeah. you reclaim that first and then the rest you can, you can do, but if you have the rest but no connection to yourself or to nature and to life, then mm -hmm. it all pales, you know, uh, and you'll find yourself doing things like taking pills and drinking and hanging yourself or whatever, because mm -hmm. having excess isn't the answer to, to what's troubling humanity at this point, mm -hmm. you know, um, easy calories and easy wealth, or maybe not so easy wealth, wealth itself. You know, what does that mean? You know, I'd like to rethink what that means. And, and, and the world keeps proving to us, COVID proved to me a bit about what it means. Look at the supply chain. Look at what's set up to happen if things fall apart or fail. How will you feed your own family? You know, so to me, yeah, the idea, man, that, you know, the diaspora can unite under one medicine banner. Um, the idea that people can reach from across different organizations and different, um, ethnic and social points of view and realize that it's a human story that's playing out and if we can help another human you know we're helping humanity if someone comes here and leaves here a better person than they showed up through self-observation self-work and realizations because there's nothing we can give anybody that they don't already have all we can do is remind people of what's important you know and that's through living the kind of life where we take what's important and make it front and center you have to walk the walk and you know, and not just talk it, you know, so um, DPS is about that walk, you know, and we'll walk with people, and nice. if, if we walk alone, we walk alone, but I know we don't, you know, you're here, you know, there are other good, uh, great organizations, really, because of the people that are involved, you know, that support us and that we support, and so in the next, in the coming year, you know, especially when COVID eases up a bit, look for a lot of collaborative work, because again, this is not a business, you know, it's a platform, it's a, it's a way of of doing what a business can't do, to be quite honest, because this is made up of people, so it's more like an organism where I'm not the head of it, you might be the head today and tomorrow I am, and another person the next day, as need, you know, arises. You know, so decentralizing all of this, man, and, and bringing it back to the roots, you know, is really, really, I think, the future for medicine work, if you're gonna do it, and here's that word again, sustainably, 
What's that mean? To me, it means Jamaican inclusion. To me, it means Jamaicans at the forefront of the knowledge of what to do with what's growing under their feet. Um, and if anyone's going to exploit the laws of Jamaica for the benefit of anyone, it should be Jamaicans. You know, so anything I can do to help contribute to that, education-wise, if my time in Mexico, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that time wasn't for me. You know, that time was for me to get fill up, to have enough left over to give away. Mm, you know, so it's about um, giving to people. You know, trying to find the balance between the economics of, of providing these experiences and making it be more than about the economics, because there's a lot of currency in this world that's not money. You know, so right. we've been trying to put together work exchange programs for people to come here and help us build out our facilities in exchange for medicine, you know, to, to show that, you know, you matter more than this thing. Mm -hmm. And you invest in us, we invest in you. And, you know, some of these things are harder to pull off than others because if someone comes here, they still have to stay somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so to, until we're in a place where COVID relaxes and we can actually purchase more land and do other things and build our own lodging and control all of it, because that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's some interesting things going on here, like the Rasta Indigenous Village in Mobe. You know, I'm privileged to have recently met up with First Man, um, who who's the the elder there, um, and so we're in talks now about collaborating to to do whatever I can do to make sure the Rasta Village gets its due. You know what I mean? There's a there's a hell of a lot of um, knowledge and wisdom from a practical living standpoint to spirituality and, and all that you could possibly want to explore, you know, um, the Rastas have going on in their communities, you know, this, this sense of balancing nature um, and the plant life and how to build and how to live with medicine work and handling like one holistic thing really has me jazzed up, you know, so I'm really happy to be, to, co to collaborate mm -hmm. just straight up, you know, as, as peers and as equals yeah. because they bring their wisdom to the table, our team brings our wisdom to the table, and through it all, you know, I think the whole thing is made better. Mm -hmm. well, what can I say, man? Um, I've found this is the second time we've done this, you know, the first time mm -hmm. we've met, I've done it live. I'm feeling the vibes, feeling the energy. Yeah. I'm glad we're here, I'm glad you reached out and that we connected. Me too. I'm inspired, and I'm pretty sure I will continue to be inspired. And I'm really looking forward to building with you, bro, man, and, you know, yeah, manifesting. I know we've got our own visions, we've got collaborative opportunities, mm -hmm. and then there's a wider community that we're plugged into that I think we need to plug into to benefit from no what doubt. this island has to offer. So, you know, let the games begin. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we said yesterday, it's a game, you know, so it yeah. might be a serious one at times, <laughs> of course, but it's a game course. nonetheless, you know, yeah. so I'm looking to have fun well, with like it. Like all games, man, there's yeah. stakes, you know, yeah, it makes yeah, it fun. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Absolutely. But yeah, all I can say is all the best with your work, your endeavors and people Thank you, support, Thank you. reach out, connect. If you come to Jamaica and you're not connecting with the Diaspora Society, guys, you're not connecting, man. You're not doing Jamaica. That's how I'm seeing it now. There's a few other places and spaces that, like you said, the Rasta Village that I think need to be highlighted, and, you know, mm -hmm. because these are, you know, um, you know, allies on, on yeah, this path and on this mission. So I will be at the village soon and I will be checking yeah. in with first man. We've already met and we'll be doing creating more content just to make yeah. sure that those of us that are, have been already doing the work, they weren't waiting for the buzz, weren't waiting for the renaissance right. to take place that were in this place and space championing this work. And you're one of those brothers, bro. And um, I appreciate too, man. you, man. So appreciate you. All the best, man. And we're gonna keep doing this. All the best, bro. Thanks. Peace. Peace, man.